Hello, we're here with Casey Sixkiller, who's running for Seattle mayor. Would you like to go ahead with your two-minute introduction? Sure. Well, good morning. Thank you so much for the invitation uh, to join the 36th LD uh, this morning. I am a resident of the 36th LD, so it's nice to see uh, neighbors here on the screen. And uh, But maybe just a quick background on me. I'm Casey Sixkiller. I was born and raised uh, here in Seattle. Uh, I'm now raising three young kids here, um, and I am the first uh, indigenous person in our city's history to ever serve as deputy mayor. Um, I'm running for mayor because I want Seattle to be a place where every family sees its future. And the fact of the matter is, this past year uh, laid bare how much inequity exists across our city. You know, this is a city that's been transformed since my childhood and has become increasingly out of reach uh, for working families, especially for black and brown families across our city. So, you know, I have entered this race to put big, bold ideas on the table, uh, ways for us to uh, uh, get more of our unsheltered um, neighbors inside uh, to help our working families make ends meet and Seattle more within reach and invest in an equitable future for our young people by expanding and capping the cost of childcare across our city. This is a defining moment for us. And in order for us to make progress, we got to come together. We got to push through the rhetoric and, you know, turn our divisions into strengths. And, and really work to show our kids that we can make lasting positive change for Seattle. Uh, I'm the only candidate in this race that has, the, has experience managing large organizations, taking words and turning them into actions. I've been doing that my entire career, working in Washington, DC, working for the county and now working for the city. And I am really excited to you know, mark my way through this campaign, talk with voters about what's important to them. And more importantly, come November, get to work. Thank you. Great, thank you. So now we'll move into uh, our prepared questions and I'll place uh, the first question into the chat box so that you could read along. Katie, would you like to take the first one and then we'll uh, second for Laura and third for Summer? Um, and the responses to these are two minutes apiece. Okay. Great, so first question is, what specific actions will you take to address the homelessness crisis in Seattle? both in the short term and long term. Please address land use, zoning, revenue, regional collaboration, the role of social services, the role of the police and justice system. Uh, the great question, an important uh, one on top of, I think every resident's minds across the city. Um, look, our region has been trying to solve homelessness for more than 20 years. And what we are seeing today across our streets and in our parks is unacceptable. It reflects um, years of uh, fits and starts at, and of solutions that haven't worked, strategies that are disconnected, and I think obviously broken systems across every level of government. So if we're gonna solve homelessness, we need to do a couple of things. Number one, we need to invest in the things that we know work. And one of those is creating more places for individuals experiencing homelessness to come inside to a safe space, get connected to services. And I think importantly, move to permanent places that they can call home. That's why I've proposed a billion dollar bond for us to triple production of permanent supportive housing units over the next few years, um, to add 3000 new units on top of what already is in production, funded by the city, funded by the county, and to leverage all of the federal and state resources that are now finally coming to the table to help us solve this crisis. Um, the second thing is housing affordability across our city is a huge issue. We have got to find more ways to create housing options for individuals. Not everyone wants a single family home. You know, some folks, you know, want to be live in a, a row house, a duplex. I did. And I think we have got to find ways to uh, rezone as appropriate to create more of those housing options. And so we have vibrant, thriving neighborhoods, you know, neighborhoods that have mixed use, mixed income, childcare available to them, grocery stores, small businesses, all of the things that make our neighborhoods so special across Seattle. The third thing is we got to make sure that we're taking, you know, too many families have been left behind in this process. And that's why I propose the largest guaranteed basic income program in the country to lift up 16,000 families to help them find a future here in Seattle. Great, thank you. Uh, question number two, Laura. What is your strategy for creating dense and diverse neighborhoods and assuring affordable housing? How would you work to dismantle systemic racist arrangements, redlining, including but not limited to exclusionary zoning and land use policies? 
Do you support and would you sign city legislation to end single family zoning as Berkeley, California recently did? Um, I am not in favor of universally and across the board ending single family zoning. I think that we have a lot of opportunity for us to rezone, of course, and to further densify. But I think um, uh, carte blanche throwing out single family zoning, I think is, is, is the wrong approach. Um, I think one of the things that's really important about um, the future of Seattle is how we come together and have practical solutions. And um, my concern about some of these approaches is that it has pushed us further, you know, pushed us further apart rather than bringing us together so that we can all agree that we need to create more housing option and choices across our city. Um, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't, you know, find opportunities in and around single family zonings to have those rezones to further densify and add both uh, permanent supportive and affordable housing. Uh, so I do support that. Um, I, uh, you know, my entire career has been working to dismantle institutional racism uh, that exists. When I was at King County, I worked specifically to try to create and inject more equity in how transit service is provided. We have transit pockets across the county that are, you know, that do not have transit service or have a lack of reliable and frequent service that goes back to redlining. You know, we have to acknowledge the fact that so many of our systems today are rooted in a, in a racist, in, uh, in, in institutional racism. And we have got to work intentionally to break that apart and create more equitable outcomes. It's hard work, but I know it can be done. We did it in Metro Transit and we can do it elsewhere as well. Uh, thank you. And question number three, Summer. Would you decrease the Seattle Police Department budget? And if so, by, how, by approximately what percentage? What is your plan for the city's SPOG negotiations? Do you support and will you advocate for ending qualified immunity for law enforcement? Look, I think uh, law enforcement, policing, and community um, uh, and public safety across our communities obviously is a, a, a significant issue that we are going to have to work through. You know, we've been at the reform, uh, we've been in efforts to reform Seattle policing for a long time now. And I will remind folks that they began with the murder of John T. Williams, an unarmed indigenous uh, person by Seattle Police Department. Um, I believe that, you know, all of this begins with a value statement that every single person in this city should be able to walk down the street and feel safe. And the fact of the matter is too many black and brown folks don't feel that. Um, and so I believe if we lead with that value, then we have a really good idea of where we need to go. Number one, that means that we need to continue to scale up uh, community organizations who can begin to relieve the uh, Seattle Police Department from an armed police response. We need to shift more 911 calls away from armed police responses. Um, there's tremendous opportunity there for us. Um, and I think we need to do that. We need to be honest, though, that some of these community organizations, while they are doing tremendous and outstanding work, are not at scale yet to step in. And so we need to support them in building that capacity uh, and creating alternatives like Health One, right? We're leading the nation with our Health One program. Uh, and we need to continue to do that. This next mayor uh, is going to negotiate the new SPOG contract. That is our opportunity to put words into action and recenter that contract on the outcomes that we wanna see and the behavior and culture we want within the Seattle Police Department. I think that is a critical down payment on actually transforming the way policing is conducted across the city. And accountability matters. At the end of the day, we need law enforcement to be more community informed, community involved, transparent, and accountable. And as mayor, I will be among my top priorities and it certainly will be reflected in the contract I negotiate with the police guild. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'll go ahead and read question four. Uh, how will you prioritize transportation <clears throat> infrastructure for biking, pedestrians, public transit, commercial vehicles, and cars? Which do you view mo as most important to prioritize funds for? Well, you know, I think in order for this to continue to be a, a livable city, a walkable city, a commuter friendly city, we have to have the right mix of all of those things, right? We have one of the largest transit systems in the United States right here in Seattle and King County. Um, we have made great strides in investing in non-motorized infrastructure throughout the city. 
Um, and obviously with the addition of light rail uh, north and south and east, we have more opportunities for us to both bring folks in and connect them to high capacity reliable transit while also reducing single uh, occupant vehicle um, trips and emissions. Uh, we have to continue to invest though. And I think one of the things that it really um, uh, sometimes gets lost in this is just the age of our infrastructure, right? We've seen this in West Seattle. You know, West Seattle has been relatively cut off from the rest of Seattle for over a year now. And I think it is a, a, an important illustration of the, of the importance of, incurring, of continuing to invest in our infrastructure and upgrade it. So I think it's the, the, the answer is we have to invest in all of those forms of transportation um, choices, uh, but also make sure that we are uh, taking great care to invest in our, in our uh, existing infrastructure, importantly, our bridges. Um, so, uh, and I'll be working uh, uh, really hard at that. That's something I've been working to secure resources for at every level of government my, my entire career. Great, thank you. So now we'll open it up to uh, questions and answers from the board. Um, and the responses to these would be one minute a piece and I'm going to try to find that timer. Um, are there any, um, from any, any uh, questions, follow-ups that are coming up for you? I, you do have one, please raise your hand. I have, I have, Two, one, uh, and I'll take them separately, but uh, there's one from our climate committee or our, our um, environment committee here in the 36. Um, how would you use your office to address climate justice, ensuring a healthy environment and access to climate supporting solutions such as multimodal clean transportation? Well, I mean, I, we, Again, I think we need to continue to invest in high capacity transit um, across our city. Again, as light rail comes online, that's the opportunity for us to begin to realign some of that service to make it easier to feed into that and, and reduce the number of, of, um, uh, of vehicular uh, single occupancy uh, trips across the city. But I also think this is really our opportunity for us to green our infrastructure. You know, we are one of the only cities in the country that has direct access to renewable clean energy. Yeah, and I believe with the Biden transportation package and other investments that the state and, and we have is in our own borrowing capacity is to really double down on building that green infrastructure, electrifying our transportation system, not just for buses, but for cars as well, if we're gonna meet our climate, uh, our climate goals uh, for the city of Seattle. Great, thank you. Summer. And Casey, I uh, want to preface this by uh, saying that I really am trying to give you a um, platform for describing some differences here, um, but also hope that you take this question as an opportunity to really um, describe what you would do differently than the current mayor. Um, the 36 was one of the organ democratic organizations that called on uh, Mayor Durkin to resign. And part of that was due to obviously her response to the um, to the protests last year, um, and also she gutted um, or tried to gut a lot of progressive revenue, such as Jumpstart Seattle, and continued with homeless sweeps. Um, there's and now we have, of course, the uh, texts that have gone missing um, from somebody who used to be the U.S. attorney <laughs> here. And you've been her deputy mayor, mayor, and so I'd really I'd like to hear about uh, your critique of uh, why we should endorse somebody who is a deputy mayor for a mayor that we have asked to resign for many reasons. Sure. Well, I think it's a it's a great question. I'm I'm glad you asked. First and foremost, it's important to remember I'm not Jenny Durkin. I'm not running to be Jenny Durkin. I'm running as uh, someone who grew up here as a proud citizen of the Cherokee Nation, raising three biracial kids in this city. Um, and I'm running with my own ideas and my own platform and my own record. And I believe very deeply in public service. I've been doing it my whole life, working to bring people together to solve problems uh, at every level of government. And um, you know, I, I approach that from uh, a very important um, uh, angle. And that's, you know, Cherokees call it Gadugi. And it's the idea of, you know, putting your differences aside, coming together as one community for the benefit of, for the public benefit. 
And that's how I intend to lead this city, to be community, be more connected to our communities, more connected to the issues that um, you know, we all care about and work to find those things that bring us that, that we can build on, right? Not let the perfect be the enemy be good, but to move forward. Um, and uh, I think it's you know, important to stack me up, not against Mayor Durkin, but stack me up against the other candidates in this race. And the fact is, since getting in this race, I am the only person that has put you know, real tangible policy proposals on the table that can help move our city forward. I'm the only one who's managed large organizations, not just the city of Seattle, but King County, uh, to actually take words and turn them into actions. And so I would hope that as the 36 and voters across the city look at me and my, what I'm running on and what I stand for as an individual is judge me on that and judge me in the context of the other candidates that are, are in this race. Great, thank you. And let's see here. Sorry, I'm gonna reset the timer. Um, Let's ask this one. Um, well, I know that, uh, you know, the, where, hang on, I'm sorry. It's towards the end. <laughs> this one was submitted by one of our members. Uh, he would love to have this question answered um, on the center city connector streetcar. Um, as the fiscal situation is much worse than it was in fall 2016, when we dropped, uh, uh, when we adopted a resolution against it, um, the capital service hours and the right of way could be used much better. So he's just asking, you know, what do you think about the center city connector streetcar and um, that fiscal situation? Um, well, the center city streetcar predates my time at the city, so I want to start by by saying that. I, I also, you know, as a general matter, though, I believe we need to be investing more in transit. Uh, and I'm, you know, Seattle, King County Metro have, you know, led the nation in finding alternatives uh, to uh, to doing just that, whether it's our rapid ride lines, light rail, uh, and other um, high uh, capacity transit uh, options across our city. Uh, and so I, you know, City of Seattle in partnership with King County is building the new Madison, um, uh, Madison BRT line with funding from the federal government. Uh, and I'm really proud of that. That's gonna be a transformational project um, from downtown up Madison. Um, I think really gives us an opportunity to examine uh, other ways to do that across the city to make you know, intercity travel, intra-city travel um, more affordable, reliable and faster. Um, so, uh, you know, but I, I, but I agree, as I said earlier that we need to look at each of our major transportation corridors and make sure it has the infrastructure in place to support multimodal, uh, multimodal movement through those areas. Um, you know, especially as our city continues to densify and grow. Uh, you know, we've got to make sure our infrastructure matches um, that growth as well. And we have not kept up in the way that I think we need to. Great, thank you. And now we are at uh, time. So if you would like to go ahead and give a one minute wrap up, that'd be great. Sure. Well, you know, thank you so much for the opportunity to visit with the executive board today and uh, to visit, I guess, virtually with uh, the 36th at <laughs> uh, some point this weekend. And I, you know, I would just ask that, you know, number one, um, that if you haven't already, please take a look at my website. It's sixkillerforceseattle.com. You know, the words that you see on that, on that website came from me. I wrote it. And you can learn more me, about me, my background, and, and the issues and proposals that I've put on the table. Um, and, you know, I, again, I am someone who has been at the forefront of pushing for progressive policies and practical solutions at every level of government my entire year, my entire career. And that's the kind of um, uh, experience that I'm going to bring uh, to this job. I think this is a defining moment for Seattle. I know that there's a lot of frustration. I know our challenges are great, but I also know we've been here before. And this is our opportunity to push for big, bold changes that we that bring us together and create a better future for Seattle. The best part about the future is our ability to shape it. And I really believe this is our moment right now for us to come together and show our kids that we can, we can move forward. So if that's something that's interesting to you and someone, uh, I encourage you to reach out uh, to me, to my campaign, you can contact me through there. I am happy to visit with anybody. Come you know, to, to, your, to your homes, to your to community meetings, whatever it is. Uh, so you can learn more about me and the direction I think we need to go for our city. Thank you very much. Thank you.